Uh, Gaigo Kirkov, uh, he's the CFO at Tyson Group. He joins in on this mega deal, which has taken uh, months in the in negotiations, but finally it's uh, seen the light of the day. Uh, Gaido, thanks so much for taking the time out. Now, this is the biggest consolidation indeed in the European steel market in more than a decade since the acquisition of Arcelor by the Mittels, uh, Mittel Steel, that is, and the buyout of Chorus by Tata Steel. In that sense, this is clearly a landmark deal. So congratulations, firstly, on signing the deal with Tata Steel. How important a milestone would you say this is for Tyson Group? This is indeed an important milestone for Tyson Group. As you probably know, the steel sector and the steel business is the heritage and the starting part of our business overall. Um, nevertheless, our steel business is already a merger of many steel businesses, mainly in Germany. It's Tussen, it's Krupp, it's Hoest uh, that merged forces uh, in the past. Now, this is an important milestone for the European steel sector. As you correctly outlined, we're creating by merging number two and number three in the flat steel sector, a really strong and convincing quality leader in steel in Europe uh, and a very strong number two behind ArcelorMittal. So we're really looking forward and are excited about it. For ThyssenKrupp overall, it's one additional step in moving further our portfolio development. Okay. Now, it took nine months for the deal to proceed and from uh, MOU stage to the definite agreement stage. Was the delay caused due to pressure from activist shareholders? No, not at all. I mean, um, you have to do such a deal in a very diligent manner. And to make that happen, we clearly said, before we can uh, move on and before we can finally sign, we need to consult with all stakeholders involved, especially with the unions in all countries. And that's why we clearly said, we've always said in the first phase, up to 4,000 people we see we have to address in the workforce. And we want to have a diligent uh, and sufficient um, consultation process, be it in Germany, in the Netherlands and in the UK. And this all together with the negotiations of the contract took that much time. That was a bit unfortunate, but nevertheless, diligence is more and quality is more important than time. Now that we could realize all that, we know that this deal, as we saw it and as we um, intended it with the MOU, can be realized. And that's why we thought this is the right timing and these are the preconditions to get to a proper signing. Okay. Now, joint venture also issues warrant equivalent to 10% of the total equity of Thyssen Group to a potential IPO. What could be the timing of the IPO? Yes, um, that was to bridge the valuation gap. If you take a look of uh, what even the outside world analysts do see, um, the contribution from our side, and that's why already at the time of the MOU, we had bigger debt numbers we could contribute to the business to make it a real 50-50 JV. But this gap has widened uh, a little bit over the recent nine months, and the warrant that we can have an IPO and therefore get 5%, so a 55% economic share in it, uh, was to reflect this valuation differential. Uh, and I think with a warrant, we found an appropriate measurement to on one hand, create a 50-50 joint venture, which we think between Tata and ThyssenKrupp, given the heritage of both companies, is the only way of making this joint venture for the future successful. But on the other hand, to overcome the issue of the increased valuation gap that we saw developing over the last nine months. Overall, an appropriate solution for this situation. Okay. This deal has uh, seen frequent criticism from the workers' unions over several months who feared job losses. How have both sides managed to assuage their concerns in the definitive agreements and what safeguards have been put in place for them? Yes, that's why we clearly said at the time of the MOU that on both sides we equally share the pain, meaning up to 2,000 uh, full-time equivalents we do see uh, that could be reduced um, in such a merger. And we uh, started the negotiations on both sides very openly to find the right measurements and put them in place. With the unions, for example, in Germany, what we could agree is guarantees for certain sides till 21, others, and most of them till 26. On the other hand, we could clearly therefore define a path with no forced dismissals, how we can address the issues of indeed reducing the workforce accordingly. Similar things have been uh, discussed and being part of the consultation in the Netherlands and in the UK so that the overall potential of the up to 4,000 FTEs can be realized in agreed uh, ways and manners with the union. Okay, so does the Tyson Group uh, 
you know, have any expansion plan when it comes to India and how important a market would you say India is for you? Uh, as a steel market, it is not so important for us. We've never exported a lot to, we just have a very small uh, mill in India, which will be part of the joint venture then. Uh, for us, India is, uh, on another aspect, a much more important market, uh, especially for our elevator business, where we recently launched a new factory and a new facility overall. We see a growing market in India for our elevator business. We're very strong in industrial solutions with engineering capabilities and even for outsourcing and shared services. We're strong in India. India is a growing economy, and we want to contribute and be part of that. All right, sir. Appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us.